Hey, you! Blah. Yeah, you! Blah. Do you want to be a part of the team the likes of which make the infected from Last of Us look like Toad from the Super Mario series? Do you want all the strengths and boons the Chaos Gods have to offer? Well, Nurgle needs you. And with this guide, we will infect the world with our superiority and make sure that... that So, with that said, I am Tech, and this is my guide to being the best Nurgle coach you can possibly be. Probably. Why is no one helping? The Nurgle team used the power of rots and disease to give them an edge of control in their drives. Be it disrupting play or recruiting the fallen to their ranks, they have a lot of power and potential. I mean, come on, they are another form of Chaos Team meaning they have almost the same strengths and weaknesses, especially that lack of a ball carrier. However, unlike their healthy counterparts, these guys have little to no pace, meaning their playstyle is drastically different. But let's talk the players. Starting as always cheapest to dearest, the Rotter linemen at 35k are so expendable you want to laugh. <laughs> Stats wise they get the job done but their decay trait means that if that frail 9 plus armor breaks and they roll a casualty, whatever result you get you have to add 1 to that, meaning there's more chance of these guys picking up more debilitating injuries or even leaving this mortal coil. Sounds pretty bad right? Well they're already cheap and the universal plague ridden trait also means if you manage to kill any force strength and below player that doesn't have the decay, stunty or regeneration traits on them, for that one time per game you can recruit those now dead players to your reserves. Now that doesn't happen all the time but death is always a given in Blood Bowl so you can easily get one or two recruits throughout a league or season. But otherwise they have no actual skills and would only have easy access to the general tree if they also weren't gross mutant abominations. So mutation gives the team a lot to work with. Just not the rotters though, they're utility fodder. So first off we will want a rotter with kick so that we have the best chance at placing our ball and limiting the touchback during kickoff. Then we can look at a designated fowler with the dirty player skill granting a plus one to either armor or injury rolls when you commit a foul. Pair that one up with sneaky git as a secondary to halve the chances of being sent off and this guy will do wonders. Anyone else you may want to look at block to make double downs in your favour, but personally I would swap that with wrestle. While block is great and usually a must have, if the opposition has block as well, which they will, the aggressive high five will allow them an easy chance to do something on their turn. Wrestle places both players prone, but no one rolls armor breaks. So on your turn, if you get a both down, that block user gets wrestled to the floor with no turnover. This makes both of you in more danger of being fouled, but you're a rotter so your soul was forfeit before the game even started. However, their guy could be a valuable player, so if we can go and take that out with a foul, it's a big trade. The other thing the both prone will mean is that on their turn, they will have to burn a blitz to make a block with that player, so it's kinda added protection in a sense. The Pestagore at 75k may look like what you'd get if you left the Chaos Beastman in a swimming pool for far too long. Actually no, that's exactly what they are. Stat wise they have a well rounded agility, armor, speed and strength that thanks to the horns mutation will allow you to boost that 3 strength to a 4 when you blitz a target. But the most interesting trait here is regeneration where if you pick up a casualty you'll have a 50-50 chance of coming out of it with no injury whatsoever and will be placed back in your reserve box till the next drive. Skill wise they have easy access to general strength and mutations pools and since we have 4 of them 
they are probably the MVPs, as they cover most of your key positionals. We're talking ball carriers, sackers, and killers. First off, block is vital for all but the sacker. So the first guy you get block on, we will make the ball carrier. So we will want sure hands for that reroll to our ball pickups. Hell, I may even say go for that first if you worry about losing the ball. Then we look into mutations to make ourselves better. Extra arms will give us a plus one to pick up and catch rolls, while two heads will give you a plus one to your dodges, effectively making you a two plus agility player. Combine that with everything before and you have one of the best ball handlers out there. Now we're going to rewind back to our block skill and make our killer blitzer. So after block we go for mighty blow to get that plus one to armor or injury rolls when needed. Then we can look at claws. The old claws mighty blow combo may be dead and gone, but they can still work well together. You see claws effectively makes eight plus the maximum armor level to break when applied to nine plus or higher targets. Now you have to roll a natural eight for that, but if you do, Mighty Blow can be used on the following injury roll. You just can't use Mighty Blow on the armor roll that needs claws to activate. So if they are nine plus and you roll a seven, nothing happens, fail armor check. That being said, if the enemy player only has an eight plus armor, then claws isn't needed, so Mighty Blow will be used if you roll that 7. Seriously, it's still a good value, as most targets are 9 plus or higher anyway. After that, we can look into Tackle to remove Dodge and ensure only pushes and skulls keep the target safe. It's a no-brainer, really. Then we have the Sacker, which again is pretty easy to build. But instead of Block, we go with Wrestle. No matter what, we want them to lose that ball and every ball carrier has block. So now we've taken that safety net away. Then we go for two heads so we have a better chance at slipping in between cages to get that wrestle off. After that, we can go with tackle, which again removes any chance of them getting away unless it's via a push or a skull. And to give us even more ball removages, strip ball, as this skill will ensure that ball is being removed on push unless the carrier has sure hands, which yeah, some will, but it depends on the carrier. And if we want to get the most out of our sacker, I say prehensile tail. This adds a one to any dodge attempt in your tackle zone. So that simple on average three plus to escape is now four plus. So you can even play a bit more safe and just mark someone. Now at a hefty 115k, the bloaters are the bashy guys, the chosen blockers who have let themselves go, losing their mobility but gaining a disturbing presence which will add a plus one penalty to both passing and catching attempts made by an enemy player inside a three square radius of you which can be very powerful. Then there's the foul appearance, which when they are targeted for a block, blitz or foul, the attacker must first roll to see if they can perform that action. Roll a two or higher, yeah, all good, but roll a one and that player will be too disgusted to make a move. This makes them a little more deadly as it's less beneficial to make those blocks as you have a one in six chance to do nothing and waste your blitz and foul which alongside Plague Ridden and Regeneration, these guys are no slouches despite their speed. Skill-wise, they once again gain easy access to general strength and mutations pools, and since we get four, and we need four, we can build these guys in a couple of ways. First off is the simple smash and bash. Block, guard, mighty blow, claws. Guard means you'll keep your assists when marked so your teammate will gain that strength boost. The other three are self-explanatory, but there is another build that will come in handy. We simply remove claws for prehensile tail. This makes getting through a cage even harder, but most importantly, it pairs so well with our final player, the Rot Spawn at 140k. This mad lad is the master of lockdown. At five strength and 10 plus armor, 
it is a hard foe to take out, made even harder with foul appearance and regeneration. Then we have that disturbing presence with the aid of Mighty Blow, but the biggest boon is the tentacle's mutation, which through the power of sheer mathematics, all but guarantees the opponent can never leave your side unless you are taken out or become your own downfall. Yes, I say this because the Rot Spawn has really stupid for a negative trait. You see, the Rot Spawn is a mindless monster. When it has a non really stupid player pull in the reins, there is a 5 in 6 chance it will do what is asked. But without at least one player next to it, it has a 50 50 chance of becoming completely vacuous, losing those tackle zones and the power of the tentacle. Which is why my last bloater suggestion is a real unit. Skill wise, they surprisingly only gain easy access to strength based skills, being the first mutant abomination to not be able to use mutations as a primary. I suppose Nurgle sees this as the evolutionary endgame that all his children should aspire to be. But with this, we have a very simple linear route. First, guard is a must. You, alongside either your bloater tamer or a rotter buddy, are going to try and lock down three players at any given time. So the Rotspawn having guard will ensure the other guy won't be getting overpowered. Then we look at stand first. You don't want to be pushed out of your lockdown even if their block is in your favour. So stand firm negates that, and then I'd say save up for block if you can. Ensure there are less chances as possible to be taken down. Then you can save up again for the last skill, Pro. Pro is always a must for the big guy. A free reroll on a 3 plus to use on the Negatrait fail makes your big guys almost unstoppable and allows you to be a little more active with them. Now team building is kinda tricky, as no matter what, you cannot get the optimal endgame build, as it's just too pricey. The standard starting route would be 5 Rotters, 4 Bloaters, 1 Pestagore and the Rot Spawn with 2 rerolls. The issue is having 2 rerolls is a real handicap when you have no free ones. And personally I like to start strong and fast with a little more room for error, so we swap out that Rot Spawn for a second Pestagore and a third reroll. Yes, we lose out on that lockdown, but we can make up for that with more pace, which means a different approach. Plus, we can easily save up for the Rot Spawn next. As far as inducements go, there's real slim pickings. Tabletop wise, they have an abundance of useful stars, but here we have Helmet, who is universal, and for his price of 140k, you get a freaking chainsaw that effectively works as a free block with one slight kickback. That is, you roll a d6 and if you get a 1, the chainsaw will kick back and land on you. Otherwise, you get a free attack that can be used on either a block, blitz or foul. Either way, you will roll an armor check with a 3 plus modifier. So it's like Mighty Blow and Dirty Player, but only for the armor. But the big issue is that kickback and the fact it's a secret weapon so Helmet will be sent off after the drive he participates in. Still, the fact that he has Pro will help negate that kickback, and is a reason to carry bribes. And when you compare him to other star players designed for fouling like Vile Rot, Vomit Flesh and Lord Borak the Despoiler, there's a fair bit of value. Formation wise, we have some simple ones, but I'll say if you go with the Rot Spawn, which most will, do replace number 6 with this. And if you are going with the two pesties over the rot spawn, swap six with number five. Now defensively, you've got to hang back. Even with four pesties, you aren't a fast team. Waiting for the right moment to get the ball from the opposition is your power play. Offensively, we ain't looking at two turn touchdowns. It's a freaking haul. Pesty gets the ball, you set up a screen, then force a tight cage up the field. If things get a bit bashy, you've got to play it smart as overall, the Nurgle are a fun to build, hard to play underdog team. While they have pace in the long run, they are still very unreliable until you get skills. Use those out of the box field control skills to suffocate the opposition. 
they can't afford to use too many rerolls, and that is what you will force them to do. Try not to make mistakes yourself though. It's a big, simple thing and works for all manner of sports, but if you don't make mistakes, you can't be punished for them. It's easy to say, but the best teams in the world always keep it simple and safe. The rot spawn will lock down a lot of players, so keeping that safe is vital when you have one. But it's going to be messy. You can't prevent that, even if you're the best Nurgle player around. But if you keep what I've said in mind, you will ensure the rot will spread. Now if you want this channel's popularity to spread, eh? don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, I'll drive the bell thingy, and follow us on the Twitch and Twitters. Also if you have any tips or tricks you found yourself or just want to tell us what your favourite team is, let us know in the comment section below. And finally, tune in next time where we go once again with another random team. But until that day, this has been Techno Odin. Stay safe, claim skulls, smash bosses, and may nothing bless your dice. <laughs>